Hey, what's up team? Eddie Gray here from The Modern Creative. I hope you're well. I'm here at the studio. We're looking at RX11. Is it worth it? Well, you gotta watch to find out. Obviously, hit the like button, subscribe. Hit the music. All right, so like I said, Isotope RX, it's out and one of the things I love about it is that they're always renovating, they're always renewing their brand. They find another way to allow us producers and beat makers and composers to be able to uh, be creative, to find audio solutions. So if you're one of those people that needs to perform surgery on your audio, then this is definitely the video for you. For example, don't know if you know this, but I recently produced a documentary. That's right, I actually put it all together, hired a, a buddy of mine, a cameraman. We had a phenomenal camera. You can see that here. Audio, not so good. Let's check out the before. Yeah, we make our own transformers and what we make are really specialized. Mm, subpar, uh, noise, there's some stuff going on in the background, hissing, mouth de-clicking, all sorts of stuff. All right, let's listen to the updated version via RX. Here we go. Yeah, we make our own transformers and what we make are really specialized. So that's beautiful. I love how clean it is. No comb filtering, clean as a whistle. You put some background music over this and you are set. Take a listen. For what we need. You know, a lot of our transformers are not very standard. So it's incredible. The software has everything you're going to need, including a module called Ambiance Match so that nothing sounds unnatural. What I want to show you today is some of the newer features. Music rebalance, dialogue contour. I would love to show you dialogue isolate. Now this one has particularly had a facelift in that they have included dialogue de-reverb in this module. They've used machine learning and it's improved the algorithm greatly. So now I can reduce the reverb quality in the voice. I could bring the voice up or down. I can bring down the noise that's kind of happening behind the scenes. And so if I remove all the noise, I feel like that could probably be a mistake. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Let me render this. I want to keep some of the room sound and some of the reverb in the voice and room as well. I think this is going to be a good fit. In terms of quality, obviously, we're going to choose the best of the best. Let's hit render. Here we go. All right, let's check this out. For what we need. So we're not buying. So yeah, that's the perfect fit for what I'm trying to do. Very clean. It sounds better than anything I've ever heard. Highly recommend this product. Let's move on to Dialogue Decontour. Now, if you've ever done uh, vocal recordings, anything in the world of, of creating content, you know that sometimes you need several takes to accomplish the mission at hand. In this case, we got a pretty decent take, but if you listen to the end of the phrase, it's not finalized. It doesn't sound like a satisfied ending. Check it out. The outside world. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that last word and I'm going to use this preset. It's called end of word down by three semitones. You can adjust this the way you would like. And let's go ahead and render and let's see what this sounds like. Outside world. Okay. Entirely different world. Maybe that was a little too aggressive. Not a problem. We'll lift this up a little bit until we find just the right curve. Here we go. Yeah, this should be it. The outside world. All right, so if you're looking for expressiveness, if you're looking for a natural tone um, as it relates to speakers, singers, this is certainly your choice. All right, so normally I don't make documentaries, right? I mostly make music. I have different clients, produce music, all sorts of stuff. In this case, I've got a song here, and I would like to highlight two new features. One of them is called Loudness Optimize. And the other one is called Streaming Preview. And I think both of these are very beneficial to one another. It's a good duo to pair on the screen. I personally think these work well together because we kind of need them, right? When we're checking loudness, we also need to check how that loudness translates to uh, um, 
a streaming service such as Spotify or Apple Music. What we're going to do right now is we're going to check the loudness setting for this song. The current integrated LUFS is negative 14.98. So it only measures that which is in the threshold. So it doesn't, if it doesn't exceed the threshold, it's not going to measure that. So I'm going to go ahead and select the preset here under loudness optimize. Current loudness of the song is negative 15 integrated LUFS. Should probably be louder for uh, a song in this style. So I'm going to go ahead and hit render. All right, you can see that something happened, right? Go ahead and check out the waveform here. This is before, this is after. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and let's go ahead and check out before and after. Here we go. So it's very important with this style of music to make sure that you are displaying it in the correct light. I'm going to pull up waveform statistics, which is a feature that I always appreciated. And it looks like with the newly optimized version, integrated loudness negative 13.7, but the short term loudness is at 11.9 loudness range 9.8, which is pretty solid in terms of um, the transitions. Look at this. The original version, the loudness range is 13.3, so you can already see a major jump in uh, production quality, right? It's making better choices as a whole. I think this is the whole point of AI is that it can help us now that it's going to overcome or, you know, uh, take over our minds or anything like that. But yeah, original LUFS, negative 19.5, short term is negative 12. Basically, to sum it up, this song is a banger, right? It's definitely hitting a lot hotter and we want that with this style of music so as you're making these decisions then you should transition over to the streaming preview and you want to know is the loudness going to compromise transient material impact punch things of that nature and so i'm going to go ahead and audition with the spotify normal preset here i just want to know does my song sound okay if we upload it to Spotify, here we go. I'm going to preview. I don't feel like much of it is being compromised. So I would say that for me, this is a good setting. And these are the kinds of A and B testing that you're going to want to do. Let's say you want to go into other settings, Apple Music, Tidal, so on and so forth. It's all there for you. All right, without a doubt, my favorite feature has to be uh, the ability to view and to process in mid side. Fantastic work. I can't believe that it's here. I personally love to spend time with audio and trying to uh, get it, you know, as best as I can to sound clean, polished, smooth. I'm into that kind of stuff. I'm not going to lie. That's what I do on my downtime. I love it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to view up here and I'm going to change the channel to mid side. Now this changes the game when we start to implement modules such as D click. Um, and so when we listen to this song here, uh, one of the problems is that when I was playing bass on it, the strings were a little bit clanky. I was getting a lot of noise. Now I could process that in stereo, but really, um, I'd be doing it in vain. It doesn't really make sense in that context. A bass is a mono instrument recorded in mono. Look, nothing wrong with the performance. It's just it sounds a little bit too clanky for my taste personally. And so I'm going to go ahead and render that out of the picture. Let's see if we can do this. All right, let's hear it. All right, let me go before. All right, and let's bring this back into the fold. All right. Let's see if we could find another one. I would say that's another one right there. Let's process that using mid side processing. All right. Yeah, it looks like we got rid of it. Here we go. Yep. And maybe we can also take care of that one right there as well. So this is powerful on so many different levels because let's just say you want to check your base content on the side channels. Maybe that'll be really helpful. Maybe this is just a great tool to uh, serve as a 
as an observer of your song rather than you know an active participant like a producer or a guitar player or something let's listen to just the side signals here this is great it's telling me a lot already right i don't have any uh bass information at least not yet i haven't heard the rest of the song and so that's cluing me in in, in that direction i don't have to make any adjustments in so far as the low end goes let's listen to the pre-chorus so in this section, I want to show you the newly renovated music rebalance. I know a lot of people have been waiting for this. You know, I've been wanting this to be upgraded for a very long time simply because I do a lot of stuff in post. And sometimes that's the kind of uh, detail work that just needs to happen to make a song go from good to great. And so basically, if we listen to this pre-chorus here, you can hear that the instrumentation um, is just simply too loud. Check it out. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this mastered file, or it could be a mix as well, and I'd like to utilize music rebalance, and we're going to bring the bass down by negative three. Let's do the same with the drums and the miscellaneous category here. All right, in terms of quality, best of the best. All right, render. So this is going to leave the voice alone. Obviously, there are implications there. You could also raise up the voice for certain sections. But here, we're going to bring down the instrumentation track. And why would we do this? Look, I don't want to go back into the mix at this point. I love the mix as a whole. This is simply a volume adjustment that is going to change slightly the feel of the song. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, listen to this. Here is after, and then I'll do a before and after. Okay, so I'm gonna Command Z that. Let's take a listen to before. You can kind of hear what I'm saying, right? Like, this could have gone one of two ways. I could have kept that pre-chorus kind of big. When I got to the hook though, I would probably be missing punch. And so now I make this part a little bit smaller in terms of dynamics, amplitude, things like that. And we could fine tune this further. If you still think there's a little too much bass, which I don't, you know, I'm a bass player, and so I think it sounds just fine. But just in case, let me bring this down by two decibels. All right, let's check it out one last time. Beach wave, summer day. So that's really nice because now the bass is sitting behind the vocal as it should be. Here's before all processing. Beach wave, summer day. And really, the bass there is kind of neck and neck with the vocal, so that probably shouldn't happen, at least in most songs. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Repair Assistant has also been greatly improved for those of you that need to clean up tracks faster than ever before. You can polish dialogue, you can have vocals that have been sung, and because of machine learning, you can basically make final tweaks in an instant. Go ahead and download Isotope RX. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. I'm so excited about what this brand is doing. And I just wanted to say thank you because this application has helped me time and time again. And I know it will be there when I need it. All right, guys, this is Eddie Gray signing off. Go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you later. God bless.